Hey, Johnny. Hey, Rusty. How are y'all? Glad to see you. I got me some Johnny Randolph going on, on SoundCloud. Johnny and the Pistols, P-I-S-T-I-L-S, on SoundCloud. Hey, Josh, welcome. I mean, Jack Dodson, welcome. Glad you could make it with us tonight. This is Cannabis Strategies 101 with, as Johnny calls me, Professor Fields. We're going to talk a little bit today about the types of things that we do with cannabis. Uh, anybody, if you've got a chance real quick, go over to my page. Check out the article from uh, Forbes magazine, USA Today, did a survey and talked about uh, the patients. The patients that are, are seen in dispensaries and uh, the state of the state. Another one on there talks about the state of the state. And uh, believe it or not, Oklahoma got a number one ranking. Number one ranking. State of the state. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard, I have uh, good news for you. If you're going to be available, I actually have a general admission ticket to the can. Uh, cannabis cup for you, sir, so you can go. I only have the one. I'll try to get another one or two if you uh, have uh, somebody else to take with you, but I do have one so that you can go. <laughs> Your favorite professor you ever had. That's just because I smoke dabs with you, brother. Just because I smoke dabs with you. You got tickets? All right, Richard. Good. Okay. I was going to share. That's all right. Somebody else will need one, and I'll have one for them. I want everybody to go. And uh, we will be finalizing uh, meetup afterwards. Uh, I've got some beef ribs that I will be ringing uh, for some uh, devil's toe jam. Uh, but some great big old dinosaur bone beef ribs that I'll be bringing and maybe some brisket, I don't know, but we'll uh, make sure we have plenty of barbecue and plenty of smoke and we will uh, and we will uh, go forward from there, do a giveaway. Johnny, they were free for me, brother. I, I, I snagged them free this morning or early morning too and uh, made sure I wanted to share since only I will be going from the house. My wife has absolutely no wit interest in going down there, <laughs> so she won't be going, but I will be. I will be. Trivia or some shit. Yes, I remembered the beef ribs. Hey, Deb, glad you made it, hon. Glad you were able to make it from the best professor. Yeah, y'all, uh, I want some of what y'all are smoking, guys. I definitely want some of what y'all are smoking. Hey, Robin. Uh, want to welcome you to Cannabis Strategies 101 with Professor Fields. Uh, we're going to get started here in just a couple seconds. Go through and uh, give a shout out to Johnny Randolph, music of the mother plant. Uh, courtesy of Johnny Randolph, he keeps us out of, uh, out of jail, out of trouble, keeps our site from getting shut down. Thank you, Johnny. We enjoy your music on top of that. Uh, Robin Selig, construct contractor for the uh, mother plant. Uh, he is only a phone call away, guys. He's uh, no job too large or too small. Give him a call, 405-404-1636, 405-404-1636. Give him a call, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Hopes and Greens Dispensary at uh, Edmond Road and Portland Road. Uh, Hefner Parkway at the end of Hefner Parkway. Uh, got some wonderful stuff. I, I have said, had some of the chocolate from up there, and it was uh, well worth the trip, guys. Well worth the trip. All right. A big shout out to James, Johnny. Dry shake. Well, it, it does happen, brother. Either ATF or <laughs> Northern Lights or both. I happen to uh, 
trying to finish up a Pineapple Express cart that I really don't care for because I'm fixing to go to my new cart. Let's see, where's my camera? There it is. There's my new cart. Uh, as quick as I finish up my Pineapple Express, I will be uh, putting that in my in my pen. So I'm looking forward to the ATF myself. Guys, uh, do me a favor and uh, share this video out some, please. Share it to groups that uh, don't get upset by uh, getting posts shared to them or videos shared to them. Uh, share it to groups of people that uh, might be uh, affected by it, that it might provide some benefit to. Uh, share it to groups of friends if you just want to say, hey, guys, this is what I'm doing. You might want to join me. All right, but share it out for me. Uh, I do not have a share button on my computer. Some Cincy Star, Roger, Robin, I have to try that Cincy Star one of these days when I'm up there, brother. If you have any left, if you haven't smoked at all. Yeah, that Alpic, uh, that Alpic is Cannawise. That's their logo. Uh, Cannawise out of Duncan. Uh, great little place. Uh, my uh, employer took a uh, bunch of uh, bunch of fresh edibles. Uh, as well as uh, our regular products for a meet and greet uh, down at Cannawise and Duncan the other day and uh, set up and uh, had a, apparently a great turnout. According to the people from Duncan, it was a uh, fantastic turnout. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them. I'm glad it worked for them. Hey, Jeremy, happy, glad you made it, man. Hope everything is uh, going well for you. Uh, Hope you've had a great day. I know it's the last day before the kids go back to school for you, so you're uh, not looking forward to tomorrow, but uh, hey, brother, uh, life goes on. It does. All right. I want to talk a little bit about uh, that article that was posted on my blog from uh, Forbes talking about. Uh, patients and uh, they surveyed just over 8,600 people who, who agreed to take their survey and came up with some uh, interesting results, some very interesting results. Uh, majority of the people that they surveyed went on to uh, tell them that the reason they use cannabis specifically was control of pain. They wanted off the medications, they wanted to find a means to control pain. And, and that's what they, uh, that's what they use. All right, Robin, well, I'll see you so, so, since you started this weekend. I'm, uh, I hope nobody minds I'm bringing dabs. Uh, I, I'm sure not many would be upset for me for bringing dabs, but that's, that's what I'm bringing with me, some dabs. I might bring a, something rolled up or two. Jeremy, I'm glad today was much better. I'm very glad today was much better. But pain control was the major reason that they, uh, they went in. Uh, it was also surprising when we looked at who was doing the purchasing and while we had lots of younger people that were in the survey uh, they went quite regularly to the dispensary and they bought product from the dispensary what the statistics what the survey showed was that the baby boomers uh, I'm on the end of the baby boomers generation uh, the baby boomers were actually the ones that were driving the sales of the dispensary. They were coming in, and while they didn't visit the dispensary as often, they uh, listed reasons as work, scheduling, uh, hours, and so on as reasons they didn't visit, visit very often. But they uh, did visit. And what the survey found 
was that spending by the baby boomers much surpassed that of the younger generations because uh, the baby boomers would come in and spend uh, 100 200 300 dollars a whack even though they didn't come in maybe once every couple of weeks they dropped three two three hundred dollars in, in product every time they came in unfortunately we had some bad news in the survey or some troubling news in the survey uh, for me for those of you that uh, that know I work as a bud tender for one of the uh, dispensaries here in Oklahoma City uh, and according to the survey information uh, bud tenders were not well used or well thought of by the people coming into the dispensary. The bud tenders were not a big reason for them to come in and buy product. What was was the way it looked both inside and outside. Its location. Those were things that uh, drove the baby boomers to, uh, to to come in and, and purchase product. They didn't want to talk to the bud tenders. They didn't want to discuss uh, health issues, problems, treatments, what they were treating. They didn't want to share information. They simply wanted to come in, see what the products were, get the products, and go. Of course, that's uh, probably a good thing. It means that they're actually spending some time uh, educating themselves if they're just walking in and saying, this is what I want, and, and I'm going to take care of my issues and, and head it out the door without asking any advice. And that's, that's good that they're educating. However, my job is to help people do that and uh, help people find products to, to meet their needs. And hopefully I'll have those products in store. If I don't have those products in store, I will actually send them to some place I know that has them. I do not have a problem doing that at all. And uh, I have told my manager and my owners uh, straight up that that's the way it should be handled. That was brought up in uh, when we were training and trying to get things open and going and uh, just flat out told them straight up that uh, we're here to take care of the patients and if we can't meet our patients needs I need to send the patient someplace that can. Uh, unfortunately some of those places are closing. Some of those places where I would send those patients are closing. So I am going to have to spend a little time going and doing some dispensary trips and uh, checking things out. Uh, I have relied on trips I've made previously and, and knowing what their, uh, the, their uh, stock was like or what they had in stock with quick visits, but uh, I hadn't uh, looked at any new dispensaries. I've got probably a list of uh, five or six that I would send people to, but I need to have some more because several of those five or six have uh, closed their doors, unfortunately. So we need to look at at that. Let's see. You love a blood turner that has knowledge like me. Well, uh, I hope they have more knowledge than I do. I'm, I'm still learning, guys. Uh, it's a whole new world out there, and when you start uh, throwing on the entourage effect, it uh, gets a little crazy uh, and gets a little confusing sometimes. Uh, but hopefully uh, we'll be able to figure out how to uh, help each other through the process. That is the key. Conversation came up the other day talking about the entourage effect. And uh, in that conversation, there was some question about use of artificial terpenes. I've also talked on several occasions about uh, the uh, use of artificial terpenes in uh, our medicine. Uh, study up in Canada dealing with ADHD and the manufacture of artificial terpenes to do the study with. The, simply the reason that they were doing it in that case is the amount of the terpenes needed and the simple volume of biomass required to process, it was more cost effective to spend the time making the terpenes. Uh, they're bioidentical, but they are manufactured. We have lots of options out there for terpenes, guys. Uh, if you are out, actually out there shopping for terpenes, 
uh, just terpenes. Uh, there are places you can go to get those. Uh, be sure and check how they were acquired, what they are. Uh, understand that there are lots of ways to get natural terpenes that don't necessarily mean those natural terpenes are from the cannabis plant. I want to see some comments from guys. What do you think the, uh, do you think a, a terpene from a non-cannabis plant would be as effective as one from the cannabis plant? Uh, if it was put into say a distillate and, uh, but it was a non-cannabis terpene. It was one that was normally found in our cannabis, but is not actually extracted from the cannabis plant, extracted from another source. It's a natural terpene. Would it be as effective? Do you think it would be as effective as one that was actually uh, extracted from the cannabis plant? Let's see some answers, guys. Entourage, there you go. Buying a rosin deck at the cup. No more golf clubs. Damn it, brother. You got rid of you can't get rid of the golf clubs. That's okay. If you ever want to play, I got an extra set or two. Uh, somehow or another I inherited like four sets of golf clubs. So even for short people, I have a women's set of clubs for short people. Yeah, I have not tried them yet. Jeremy, y'all were going to try them and I had to leave. Uh, I have not yet tried the Terp Wraps. I need to, uh, I did some searching the other day to see if I could find some and uh, didn't, but I need to see if I can find some and, uh, and get that taken care of because I would like to try them. Uh, do, do they vary based upon the terpenes on the wraps? Is there a choice? Mr. Watts, uh, Daryl, yes. As far as the a strain that will help with the pain, but but not like the high. Probably what we need to look at for treating your symptoms individually because the high is not what you're wanting, but you want to treat the pain, is instead of smoking it, looking at ingesting it. Uh, looking at taking an edible uh, tincture, let it process through the liver. It would no longer be delta-9 THC, which is where we get our high. It would be delta-11, which is actually more effective on what it does in the brain, but it does not produce the high effect that the delta-9 does. So if you look at a high THC strain, uh, Probably an indica strain, uh, blueberry, blackberry, kush, uh, something along those lines, uh, nine pound hammer, some of the other berries that are the, the heavy strong indicas, uh, stay close to us uh, to, a, to a, as close to a land race as you can get. Uh, try to keep it there. There's some Tibetan uh, stuff, the Kush, anything from the Kush uh, stock, the Kush mountains. There's a couple Thai uh, from that area. But uh, the high THC, pinene, myrcene, coriophyllin, linalool probably would do uh, the best bet for uh, fighting. Uh, fighting pain and uh, not getting the uh, the head high, the, the messed up high. But Daryl, look at uh, edibles. Look at ingesting it so that it's processed through the liver before it hits the bloodstream. And uh, if you eat it, it has to be processed in the liver before it can go back on throughout the body. It's picked up and, and, and taken into the liver. Uh, if you were smoking it or using ingestion, um, where it's actually absorbing in the uh, buccal space or, or, or membranes, uh, like a tincture, 
uh, then you would actually get the delta 9 THC into the body for the high instead of the delta 11, which has been the delta 9 processed by the liver to make delta 11. So I would love to tell you a specific strain, but I do not know where you would go to get it and what they actually have based upon uh, what they have in their uh, stock. But ask their bud tender what is the strongest indica that they've got. And then uh, look at the possibility of uh, edibles with that. Now, you may need to make those edibles yourself. I know you broke your ankle, so you're probably not supposed to be up on it. Uh, a chair, you can sit in a chair and cook in the kitchen. But... Uh, a tincture, a simple tincture will work really well for you with that bud. Uh, use an alcohol tincture, uh, or you can distill it in butter, the butter machine. Uh, if you ask around, you might have friends that have butter machines and can actually uh, make that butter for you so you can ingest it that way. Or there are commercially available, uh, commercially available edibles. Look at uh, some of the high THC, high dose edibles. Uh, simply because your body is going to be converting it in the liver. So look toward the high THC edible. That way your body has the available processes to convert it so that you, you, you get that. No difference in molecular structure. None whatsoever. It is still the terpene exactly the same. However, if we look at something like linalool, it comes from, say, uh, lavender, the essential oil from lavender contains linalool. Uh, cannabis, essential oil from the cannabis plant, contains linalool. Wow. Same strain, same, same, same molecularly identical, bioidentical. But is there a problem using the linalool from the uh, lavender plant if we're trying to create, say, a uh, tincture for a specific function? Uh, add it to something else to uh, get a different function. In the case of uh, Billy Dunn and, and Hillary, as they're trying to get responses for the autistic children, they are considering using individual terpenes for effect on top of what they're getting through their strain-based treatment. Uh, so something to think about as you're looking through look at different things you do Robin all right brother we're gonna have to try them uh, there you go Richard that's it uh, Mercine is the pepper one, Deborah. It is exactly the same found in non canna products as it is found in canna products. The biggest difference in it is the strength in which you find it in a pepper, a can of pep black pepper. It's going to be very strong to where in our smoke it may not be nearly as strong or certainly is not going to be as strong. Scentsy Star Citrus Sap, saps work good. That is something to consider, Daryl. Uh, use of a, a, a tree sap, trevicle, uh, lots of different uh, words, but cough syrup. It, it is uh, simply take a swig and you mod modulate how much you take based upon your need for pain. It works. It works well. I uh, have some in the ca in the con cabinet myself, in the safe myself. Salves, pain bombs, uh, definitely. THC containing not just CBD, but get one that contains CBD too. Do not back away from CBD in your treatment of your pain. You want the CBD as well. They provide different functions on different parts of the body to control pain. Inflammation is a response to CBD, or reduction of inflammation is a response from CBD. 
Reduction of inflammation will decrease pain. If the pain's decreased, it doesn't take as much to control. THC will work on the pain. It does not, does not decrease inflammation. CBD does that. So we want to work together. We want the CBD to decrease inflammation. We want the THC to uh, treat the pain along with the turpins, the entourage effect. It all works together as one unit. It works hand in hand. So we want it all in there to, to help work on that pain. So certainly something like the uh, liquid, the tree barks, the, the, the liquids uh, work really well. You can... Uh, modulate how much you take based upon your pain level and response. I bet it's elevated, brother. I would hate to have to break my ankle and then try to get around. Deborah, you're right. It is exactly the same as what is found in the cannabis. Simply the uh, concentration. Like the linalool and the lavender, the concentration is a lot higher than it ever be found in the cannabis plant. Same thing for the limonene. If you were doing lemonade, you have lots of limonene. If you and, and you're treating yourself by take by by drinking lemonade, you're actually treating yourself by intake of the turpin limonene. So you actually are treating your physical condition with it. But it's a lot higher in the lemonade than it will ever be out of the cannabis plant but they are biologically exactly the same. They are bioidentical. Bison does make good salve. Uh, I got to put Max plug in. Max, Max makes good salve and lotion both. Uh, I have not heard who was chosen as best of OKC for in, in the category with the lotions or salves. I do know that Mr. Max had uh, infused lotion uh, as a finalist in the uh, Best of OKC con competition. Richard, I hope when you do smoke it, you're able to go to sleep immediately. Uh, one of my problems is insomnia, and I do not. Uh, the brain fog can get bad. My wife complains about the brain fog when she uh, has indulged. Also complains about a headache. If she didn't go to sleep immediately, she had a headache afterwards. Uh, I do not have the headache. Uh, I, unfortunately, I also do not sleep very much. So I'm very big on uh, strain specifics that help me sleep. Uh, my nine pound hammer is uh, my go-to. Uh, and I keep a little bit on hand to keep a little bit set back just in case I need it. Uh, probably a better idea for me to smoke nine pound hammer and go to sleep uh, in the bed at night rather than in front of the camera on a live feed. I'm going to try to try to get some sleep so that doesn't keep happening, guys. I apologize profusely for that. Uh, I slept good over the weekend. Uh, got lots of sleep. Uh, slept pretty much all day Sunday, all night Sunday night. Uh, and on into Monday. So uh, I got lots of sleep. Hopefully I'm uh, caught up for a little bit. Richard, I also, well, I do hybrids. Sativas are my thing. I tend to gravitate to uh, high sativas. Uh, close to ran land race sativas. Uh, I also smoke a lot of land race sativas. Uh, I uh, in, I will smoke sativa 24/7. It doesn't matter. Just the way I am. CBG, yes, CBG. Uh, the thing about CBG is. Uh, often referred to as the stem cell of cannabinoids because the CBG level, while low in the uh, finished harvested product, wasn't that way just a few weeks ago before harvest. Just a few weeks ago before harvest, the CBG was still being converted to, uh, to uh, THC and 
CBD, and CBC. So it was still converting it, uh, still making those compounds, and that's what uh, the CBDG does. It actually is made as CBG, and then it breaks down to produce other compounds. Uh, much like a stem cell will, it'll produce those compounds that are needed based upon what's going on. Continue to take your CBD. CBN, yeah, basically Valium, it does help with uh, stress relief and relaxation. Your ends, your THCN, your CBDN, they also have some physical functions. Uh, commonly used in treatment of conditions related to diabetes. Your ends are very big on uh, wellness with the diabetes, pancreatic function, uh, body regulation on the ends. You work at a CBD, CBD dispensary. Yeah, there you go, brother. Uh, mine doesn't carry CBD. I wish it did. Uh, I wish we had some high CBD strains uh, or even some medium CBD strains. However, uh, almost everything we have in the case is uh, indica, most of it heavy indica, and uh, I like sativas. However, we do have some fantastic edibles. <laughs> that is our uh, our claim to fame. So. Yes, you do, sir. Uh, make that contact with them. You do need to get just take the resumes out and make that contact with them. That's what will we'll get it done. Uh, when I went to work for Mr. Max, I was one of uh, 11 he chose full and part-time to uh, work for him. Uh, I was one of the fortunate 11. He had 768 applicants and chose 11 uh, full and part-timers. So, April, glad to have you this evening. Glad you joined us. Uh, am I safe? I didn't say anything all day long just because I was afraid if I did, you were going to get me. Thank you, Jeremy. I try not to fall asleep. Daryl, sleep well, brother. Best wishes with the leg. Keep the foot up. Ice. Uh, help control the pain. Your CBD, THC with uh, edible uh, so that you get the body effects from it, not so much the mind effects. Best wishes, brother. Good luck with that leg. Deborah, enjoy dinner. I will, am fixing to have some uh, keto fried chicken when I get off here. I'll watch Billy's show and eat some keto fried chicken and some uh, Brussels sprouts. I'm here, Jeremy. Let me know, brother. PM me. No problem. Favorite sativa strains? Mine are real easy. Uh, Durban Poison. Uh, Maui Wowie. Uh, Swazi Gold. White Widow. Those are those are my favorites. Uh, those are the ones that I would go to above others. Uh, I also happen to be growing all of them. Wow, I like sativas. Uh, so, I guess Kim Dog is actually considered a sativa. That's what I'm told. Kim Dog is considered a sativa. It's about a 60-40 hybrid. So, yeah, Kim Dog. Uh, the so mango is an indica, I'm told. Uh, so that's okay. I've got an indica. I've got some Hindu Kush. Uh, ACDC. Is ACDC an indica or a sativa? It's about a 50-50. High CBD strain. About a one point six to one ratio THC CBD but is it a sativa or an indica somebody let me know because I don't know 
I would love to find out. I was just given a clone and said, it's yours. CBDV, uh, not real forward, but if you give me just a sec, let me see what I can find. Jack, uh, I do actually have a uh, little reference material. Let's see here. Hold on now, guys. I'm, I'm I'm trying to find that information for uh, Jack. Let's see. I know I saved it. I know it's right here. I just have to get back down to it. Well, who knows? Maybe I did save it. I'm sure I did. In fact, I know I did. I don't know where I put it, but it's here. Let's see. Let's see here. Sorry, guys. I have to go to a source besides Wikipedia. I don't have a problem with Wikipedia information, per se. I have a problem with the way Wikipedia information is reviewed and uh, modified. Anybody can make any statement on Wikipedia and change from a factual description to a fantasy description just because they don't agree with what was uh, originally posted. Uh, be very careful when you go to Wikipedia and start looking at uh, what's presented. Uh, it may look like something presented directly from a textbook, but it may be way, way off base. So think about that as you uh, are, are looking at Wikipedia. THCV is THC, uh, Canada is, uh, let's see, Tetrahydra Hydro Canna Bivarin. Different from THC and CBD. Let's see here. Similar structure to THC. However, it's not. Different effects. You have to get your, uh, when you're smoking it, when you're uh, uh, intaking it, if you're using a vape, you have to get your vape up much higher uh, than you would for the THC. Uh, the boiling point for THCV is 428 degrees. 
So appetite suppressant, help with diabetes, reduce panic attacks, help with Alzheimer's, uh, lesions in the brain tend to be improved with it. It stimulates bone growth. Uh, those are pretty much all the things I had previously heard from uh, THCV, uh, but there are those. THCV strains, African sativas, Landrace African sativas like Durban are high in THCV. Well, that could be why I like them, because it helps my diabetes, helps with my uh, not getting hungry. Uh, so, and my you know helps fight depression, paranoia. <coughs> All right. Uh, for whatever reason, the. Uh, hybridized African strains t tend to be higher in THCV, just as do the uh, African land race tend to be higher in THCV. Look at the test results. Let's see, high THCV strains, Doug's Varen, Pineapple Perps, Durban, Power Plant, Willie Nelson, now that's what I need to try. Red Congolese, that would be fun. Jack the, Jack the Ripper, that would be fun. Durban Cheese, uh, Skunk One. Skunk number one. Interesting uh, lineup of uh, what they're listing as the uh, tend to contain the most THCV. Does that help any, Jack? Uh, ACDC is supposed to be great for ADHD, Deb. PTSD, Jack Harrier, because of the entourage effect specifically, uh, and the fact that it contains the CBD as well, the CBD working on the uh, psychological issues that they face with their PTSD. ACDC will treat, or Jack Harrier will both treat anything that needs both, uh, or that would be affected by both THC and CBD. Uh, Jack Harrier is considered uh, one of the medical strains, a uh, very good strain uh, for use for medical conditions, but it contains that CBD portion as well. Let's see, Jack, this one was... Uh, since 2008, I can guarantee, February of 2015, this article I just uh, reviewed uh, was February 3rd of 2015. There is a lot of research that goes on. Is it psychoactive? Is THCV psychoactive? Uh, well, a whole article about whether it is or is not. It's the sports car of cannabinoids, according to one California testing lab. Powerful high without the munchies. So let's see. Let's no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> They're not sure. Will it get you high? <laughs> They're not sure. Research does not uh, has not been conducted for that. It's been isolated and researched, but they haven't done any in-depth uh, research on it. Huh. Interesting. CBG, CBGV, acid, both of them the uh, stem cells of the uh, cannabis plant. Because from the CBGA, 
you get THCA, CBDA, CBCA. From the uh, CBG variant A, you get THCV, CBDV, and CBCV. So, certainly that stem cell we talked about with the CBG uh, cannabinoid uh, being broken down to produce other other cannabinoids or growing, uh, growing and modifying itself to produce other cannabinoids. Uh, certainly is, is evidence with uh, THCV in the plants. So, uh, suggest THC is about a quarter as potent as THC in regard to psychoactive effects. Says the nature of the molecule, molecule changes based on dose. So that at higher doses, it behaves as a CB1 agonist, much like THC. Take a lot of TV, THCV, and uh, you're going to be acting like it's THC. Low doses, it doesn't. Huh. Said to in intensify the effect of the THC. Doesn't last as long as the THC does. About half as long as the THC does for effect. Huh. Interesting. Kim, glad to see you. Skinny pot, Deb. Skinny pot. THCV containing pot is skinny pot. Uh, you get the uh, effects of the pot, uh, the, of the uh, cannabis, without the high, without the munchies. You don't get the munchies, so you don't eat. Also, it helps with nausea, believe it or not. Richard, that's exactly what it uh, has taken uh, with, with mine. Uh, I'm down 272 pounds uh, and diet controlled as a diabetic. Toothpaste for the soul? I had not heard that one. Deb, I hope they, hope they do too. I uh, hope they have those clones. Look forward to letting us know tomorrow night. My name is Strain after an Australian rock band. ACDC, alternate direct current, yes, high voltage rock and roll, yes, Johnny, high voltage rock and roll, hey, Linda, glad to see you, Richard's correct uh, with the sativa base because of the THCV, when you get it, it, look for the African sativas, right? Uh, so you find your African sativa, you tend to get some sativa effects. It might cause some anxiety, but if you have a nice indica available, hit the indica, bring that anxiety down. Uh, there's no reason to say that you can't smoke more than one strain at the same time or smoke a joint of one and have a pipe of another one handy that would certainly work to get that so that you can modulate that uh, that uh, anxiety effect from the uh, from the sativa science yes Deb if you're trying to gain weight stay away from the THCV Definitely stay away from it. Uh, the ends would be better. Ends would be better for you. The CBDG would be better. The CBC, THC, uh, munchies. Don't use skinny pot if you're trying to gain weight. Even if it does help your uh, nausea, let's look for something else that will uh, affect your nausea. 
Kimberly Campbell, welcome. Glad to see you. Very true, Richard. Most will. Uh, Linda, let me ask you, uh, can you tell me when is the best time to harvest, harvest your cannabis uh, to increase your CBG content? If you're trying to increase CBG content for its neuroprotective effects, when is the best time to harvest it? Richard, do you know when the best time to harvest it is for the CBG effects? Everyone is different. That's part of the difference in uh, in this medicine. But this is no different than what uh, uh, we've faced in medicine for hundreds, thousands of years. Every patient is different. Every patient responds to the medicine different. Be that pharmaceutical me medicine, uh, pill mill pills that they just churned out in the back of a wagon, uh, elixirs that were mixed in the in the wooden buckets or are mixed in uh, uh, wooden tubs, drums, uh, barrels. No different. It worked for some and so others it didn't. Uh, the only thing that worked for everybody was when they started doing things like laudanum uh, and uh, laudanum was a big one. It worked for just about everybody. Cannabis elixir worked for just about everybody. Uh, but the reason they worked for everybody was because if you take that many opioids, it's going to work. You don't have a choice. It is going to work. You're going to get numb. You're going to go to sleep. You're going to have respiratory depression. And if you took too much, you're going to die. Unfortunately, that's the case. And that's what happened with a lot of people that uh, back in the uh, 1800s, uh, early 1800s when uh, it's quite common to have bottles of laudanum just over the counter at the at the general store uh, or cannabis elixir at the general store they would uh, just buy it take it home and uh, swig on it for effect of course that didn't mean that 30 minutes from now when your body actually is able to uptake it that you weren't still swigging on it because the effect wasn't there uh, a lot of people died from that kind of behaviors uh, and it didn't treat the problem that they were going with. It just postponed it, uh, especially if it was uh, the consumption. The consumption is a big word. The consumption would get them anyway. TB, cancer, would get them anyway. Usually they were using laudanum. Cannabis uh, was harder to come by. The, the laudanum was pretty easy to come by. Uh, Cannabis was a lot harder to come by as far as for treatment. THCV. THCV is uh, tetrahydra cannabivarin is the name. It is the molecule that uh, suppresses that, the, the cannabis molecule that suppresses appetite, most commonly found in African sativas, uh, high high sativas, African sativas. It uh, is one of the many cannabinoids that uh, we do we we work with uh, on a daily basis as we medicate. About two weeks early. Watch your trichomes as they start to turn. Amber is the time to. Uh, Start harvest if, if you're actually looking for CBG. CBG. The reason you're wanting to harvest early is because that CV, CBG has not yet been converted to CBD or THCA. Or in the case of CBD VA, it has not been converted into uh, CBCV. CBDV and CBGV. Those are the, the bivarin 
portions actually made by the CBG molecule. Uh, remember, we talked about CBG molecule being the uh, sort of the stem cell molecule for the plant. The reason being is it specializes to supply for the plant. Uh, from what it is now, it will specialize production to produce something else within the plant, uh, just like the stem cell does in the human body. Laudanum was uh, morphine, opium, elixir, morphine elixir. It was certainly man-made. All natural from a plant, but man-made. Yeah, Deb, look for your trichomes to start to get amber when they first start to get amber. If you're looking for CBG, that is the time to harvest. Uh, but that's still quite a ways off. Your uh, plant went into pre-flower in June, end of June and went into is now in flower in July. Uh, unless it's an auto seed. If it's not an auto seed, it's a photo period seed outside. They are in the flowering stage now and just beginning into the flowering stage. Uh, we're still getting about 13, 13 and a half hours of light right now uh, a day. Uh, that needs to come down a little bit before they go into the 12 12 cycle or into the harvest cycle. But you're starting to see harvest changes. You're starting to see bud growth uh, on, on your plants right now from uh, getting ready to go into harvest. Definitely, the more amber, the more sleepy weed. The more uh, clear, the the more uh, up and moving weed. You want them clear for CBG. Once they get milky, they are uh, producing the highest level THC or cannabinoids at that time. As they start to go to amber, they actually start to drop off just a little bit. So think about that as you uh, look at your harvest. THCA actually comes from CBGG. Uh, when the, uh, the CBG cannabinoid is manufactured, when it breaks down, it actually produces THCA. Now the plant also produces THCA, but the CBD, CBG molecule breaks down to produce THCA as well. Uh, that's that, that mother plant, that, uh, that stem cell nature of it. It actually breaks its own self down to produce other cannabinoids within the, within the plant. A CBN. Pollen is active these days, guys. Linda, Raymond Storm is on here. Uh, hit Raymond up and ask him about uh, uh, timing on the harvest. I would love to tell you, but I do not know growing. I try to grow, I work to grow, I enjoy and get frustrated and cuss and, and kick uh, about my growing, but I am nowhere near close to knowing all of it. Uh, Raymond is certainly the one that is uh, uh, much more uh, knowledgeable about that than I am. Johnny, morphine's nasty stuff, especially long term. Raymond says, I'm learning. We are all learning. That's part of this process. We are all learning. We are all moving forward. We are all trying to find what we need for our own wellness. Remember the concept of wellness. This is a wellness 
program, we talk about wellness, not all wellness. We'll talk about all kinds of wellness. Uh, we'll talk about things we shouldn't be doing that we do, like, uh, I'm going to smoke my cigar. But is that something that's good for me? It's smoking. Yeah, I'm going to smoke. I'm a smoker. I have been for years and years. I will quit again. I have quit over the years. Hardest thing you ever do is quit smoking and then to stay away from it. Best thing you do is your body recovers after approximately seven years. Uh, seven to 11 years, your body recovers and uh, redoes the damage. Uh, it will not change disease process so that if you have developed COPD, you will still have COPD. If your lungs have changed physically because of it, they still will. However, the tissues will heal themselves so that they are not inflamed uh, during the break and re rebuilt themselves. Package does give you, when you buy your beans, your package does give you a uh, an average, but don't take that as a gospel because it depends upon your individual plant. Uh, is it expressing a phenotype that uh, is not what they have actually listed? That's entirely possible. Uh, a new phenotype or a different phenotype that has another week or two in the flower than the uh, than the original mother. Uh, so what we want to do is look actually at the plant to make those decisions and look at the trichomes on the plant to make those decisions. Those are what's going to tell you when they when they start to get amber uh, how ripe that that bud is, how far along in the budding process it is. Do we want it to go all amber? If I'm smoking nine pound hammer to go to bed, it work for me. All amber. Take them all amber, 80% amber. But if I'm looking for a creative head high, uh, I might not want but just a couple few amber scattered throughout the, the plant and everything else uh, milky or, or clear to milky. Uh, depends on where the trichome development is where the development of the cannabinoids within the plant is. And those development of those cannabinoids actually is what affects us as we ingest the plant. Congratulations, Michael. Toki, I saw you slip in, brother. Welcome. Yes, Chantix uh, is a script. Uh, I wish you luck with it. Linda, it worked. It was very effective for me. However, I did have some behavioral changes uh, along with it and had to cease taking it. Uh, so be very careful uh, and, and ask somebody close to you to kind of uh, watch out for you as you're taking Chantix. If you've just started it, uh, give it a week and see where you are then. Uh, watch for behavior changes. That was one of my issues. Next song is going to be called Sugar Leaf. Oh, the one on the radio, the one fixing the play, Johnny, or the one you're writing? I got a commercial. Hey, all right, guys. I have been on here a little long. I kind of need to turn it over to uh, Mr. Dunn. I appreciate y'all coming out. We may start just a few minutes late tomorrow night. Uh, I will be on shift until eight on the south side and have to run home uh, to get to the computer, uh, provided I don't get stuck with inventory again. Uh, I got stuck last uh, Friday with inventory, and I apologize for missing the show. So 
with that being said, welcome. I'm glad you showed up and came. I hope you enjoyed. I hope there was some learning going on. I hope you picked up something that you can incorporate into your medication treatment, into your stat strategies of disease treatment, symptoms treatment with cannabis. This is Cannabis Strategies 101 with Professor Fields signing off for the night on the mother plant. Big shout out Johnny Randolph for our official music. Robin Selig, the contractor of the mother plant, 405-404-1636. Uh, Johnny Randolph, Johnny and the Pistols on SoundCloud. Reach out to them and uh, uh, follow them. Uh, help them along. And then uh, we'll go from there. I uh, love you all. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Talk to you tomorrow night. Uh, check my blog. Everybody, please check my blog. I will try to post tomorrow night's topic uh, in the morning before I uh, go into work. So I will talk to you all then. Have fun. Enjoy. And I'll see you in a few minutes.